Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Fear Fic is the term for short horror fiction, mostly posted on the web. It includes any and all related subgenres. Join three assholes talking basement goose slime beast, inebriated interstellar traveler abysme, and irritable ghostly man whore dead palette as they read all stories horror and internet related, paragraph by paragraph, and bullshit while they do it. From adolescent revenge fantasies to subtle postmodern narratives about real life events and everything in between, they read it and critique. You better believe it. Kick it to the cold open, white boy. Melina from Mortal Kombat. Blowjob, yay or nay? Yay. Nay. What the fuck? Nay. Yay. What the fuck? Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, this yeah, yeah, is yeah. this is my impression of myself getting a blowjob from Melina. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. Yay. Man, if I was getting a blowjob from Melina, I'd be like Pog Champ yeah, on my I, wiener. No, <laughs> I want her to sit on my face. I don't want a blowjob from that. Sorry. Yeah, okay, so listen, listen, check this out. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you because you're being really racist towards Tarkadans. Listen, she's got big fangs, right? Yep. But the big fangs are on the sides of her mouth, which yep. means that We're her talking throat... That- we're talking MK10, Melina, I think it is, yes, not MK11. Oh, sucks. oh, we specified, except no, we didn't. Yeah. Okay, so she's got fangs on the side, which means that she is meant for chopping off big things, which means that her throat must be very accommodating and very inviting for a blowjob. Now, every blowjob has inherent risks. I so, thought you were going to say she's meant for chopping off big things, which is no uh, risk to you. My <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> Ouch. Um, so I think we can all agree that that's a that's a low blow. All right. So I personally that's a that's a, that's a uh, Johnny Cage low blow. Very true. Very true. I am very much a fan of uh, you know they always say never stick your dick in crazy. Okay. But I'm like, no, that's where you want to put your dick. It's like you don't want to – when you go to the theme park, you don't want to be like, I'm going to sit on a bench and eat popcorn. No, you go on the fucking roller coaster. You know, you want to be in crazy. You want to be have an exciting time. No, no, Slime Beast, you go on the roller coaster. You don't stick your dick in the roller coaster. That's the danger. Sure, I don't. Anyway, so the thing is with Melina, you're missing some very uh, important things here. If you can successfully get a blowjob from Melina and not be killed, that is an immense amount of trust and affection in that relationship. Yes. Okay. It, and so and so we know for a fact that Melina is power hungry. Mm-hmm. Um and so if you are a she's con, got daddy issues. She's calm hungry, she she's power hungry. She's power hungry. So if you are a con, mm-hmm. then definitely do not stick your dick in there, because that is a danger. She will bite it off and usurp the throne. The pro but, is I'm not a con, yes. But if you're not a con, then it's nothing but pro. Yep. That's a good way to remember it. Yep. So here's the thing, too. You say you want Melina to sit on your face. Is that correct, Abysne? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. problem with that is uh, I, I love he, Melina. He to, Mel- Melina he is my more no, no, no. thickest tongue please, crazy. Please elucidate for me the problems with that. Okay. My problem with it is this. I'm a big fan of Melina. Melina is my Mortal Kombat waifu. Okay? Melina also, I get a feeling, probably a little rank. You know what I'm saying? I, you know... Probably, mm. probably not the they, most hygienic. Uh, they do no, that's have... you being racist now. Well, they she's a she's actually... a clone with mental issues, crossbred with a monster race of aliens. You can't factually. tell me it ain't gonna oh, be a little so funky. All you know aliens what I'm are dirty. No, I get it. That's fine. <laughs> factually, they do not have indoor plumbing in Outworld. She that is. is why they, that's why they call fighting. it. That's that is why they call it Outworld because they shit in outhouses there. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. The a whole world is an outhouse. going on right now. So the That's thing is, she's constantly fighting. This goes for every Mortal Kombat character. Every Mortal Kombat character, I'm sorry, has swamp ass. <laughs> They're constantly sweating, constantly fighting, covered in blood, gushing gore. You know, at least with her mouth, you figure, <sighs> probably you could get a mint in there, you know, with that. Every <laughs> Mortal Kombat character has swamp ass, especially Johnny Cage. <laughs> yeah, especially Johnny Cage. <laughs> Fucking Hollywood elite motherfucker. (laughs) You can't tell me Johnny Cage isn't a part of Pizzagate. Come on. (laughs) Johnny Cage on Epstein's Island. That's where they're holding the tournament. (laughs) 
<laughs> Wait, what, what, are we up to Mortal Kombat 11 yet, or is it still 10? It's 11. No, Mortal Kombat 11 came out. Yeah. 11 came okay, out, so... and it's the uh, it's the Mass Effect Andromeda of Mortal Kombat games. <laughs> so if 12 comes out and Epstein's Island isn't the final stage, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> Epstein wins. Soul fatality. <laughs> Uh, Fuck, I must, I fucked up the buttons again. Damn it. <laughs> uh, um, yes. Which one is it, fair or tour? Which one? Anyway, point is, <laughs> I, I was trying to think of a child in relation to Mortal Kombat. Why? It was a struggle. <laughs> because joke. Anyway, are, are, uh, so what you're saying, Slime Beast, is that you're not into sap. Not into what? Sap. Swamp ass pussy. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Bring a fan boat and a crock for the swamp ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm we... just saying, I'm just saying, you know. Plus, when would you ever get that chance again? You'd constantly be like, you know, hey, you know, who has two thumbs? <laughs> who has two nubs where their <laughs> thumbs used to be and fucked Melina in the mouth? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> it's uh... bragging rights, essentially. Well, I mean, ap- apparently Abysmy It's wants- medical debt is what it is. <laughs> apparently Abysmy wants to tongue punch Molina's fart box. Yeah. And what's the point of it being Molina at that point, Abysmy? Yeah, not the novelty I- of the situation, obviously. It could be any butthole from Mortal Kombat. But yeah. it was Jax. Molina's butthole. That carries significance. Is- no, it doesn't. It yes, does- it does. Does it have teeth? <laughs> Probably, because it's Melina. See what I'm getting at? She was Why, teeth a toothbrush and teeth some floss for this tooth ass pussy. Why would there be? Why would there be teeth there to like chew up the poop? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> she has a very high fiber, high fat diet. Got to get that. You know, she just eats alfalfa all day. That's all they have in Outworld. <laughs> That's why they call it Outworld. Alfalfa world. <laughs> Okay, can we go back in time and change it? <laughs> so that whatever it is, fucking... Whatever fucking well, company it is, I, I, mean, I can't think of the name Isn't that what Armageddon did? I, it was just, like, rechange history and shit? And the I, I am Koto Khan. Khan of Alfworld. Eat alfalfa! Armageddon is a fucking shit post of a game, but I kind of love it. Mortal Kombat 11 is a shit post of a game. Oof. I I have not played like 21 Test Savage game. did the the music for the trailer. It was a giant shit post. Uh, should have been 21 Pilots. <laughs> <laughs> All my friends have teeth, but make it so. God damn it. <sighs> <sighs> well, um, where do we go from here? I think that we just need to, like, put down in the comments below a uh, formula. I know that we don't like to get political on this podcast, and we said we wouldn't anymore. But t- tell us, who do you think would make a good con for Outworld? <laughs> well, you know. we, we have a fair amount of weebs in the Too Spooky Discord, so we'll get some responses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah weebs, because why? That famous <laughs> JRPG Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Oh, the two crossover these days. Don't lie. <laughs> Honey Pop 3, Mortal Kombat Edition. Fucking Honey Pop has a release date of February 8th. Fucking hyped right now. What would you call Mortal Kombat Honey Pop? Skull Pop? Heart Pop? Uh, Honey Combat. Oh, of course. I don't know, I don't know how to tell you this, Abysme, but it's um, February 12th already, so you're already playing Honey Pop as this is coming out. Yeah. Oh, shit. As this is coming out, Abysme's dick is coming out because he's playing Honey Pop. <laughs> Honey pop nonstop. Oh, okay. So uh, we're at the uh, Lol Pasta Wiki. The Lol Pasta Wiki is that any relation to the Troll Pasta Wiki? Pr- probably. I Wait, don't are know. we at the Troll Pasta? Oh, oh, yeah, that's confusing. So my my thought is this is where the Troll Pasta Wiki moved after fandom shut down the Troll Pasta Wiki because trolling is bad. This troll boss is inspired by the Meat Canyon video field trip. Check it out for yourself. Which I haven't seen, so this is not going to spoil anything for me. No, I guess not. Um, so the little pasta is just troll pasta. It says troll pasta right at the top, but uh, yeah, I guess let's uh, let's get into some uh, some shit post of creepy pasta. Many of us remember that. Did we say the name of the story? No. <laughs> why? Why bother at this point? 
This is the Magic School Bus. WAP. <laughs> when was this posted? Oh, uh, uh February twelfth. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa. In the future. That's <laughs> crazy. Bless me, everyone. We're we're still drunk from the last episode. <laughs> it's been an entire week. Mm-hmm. We just haven't sobered up. It's true. I, I like that the tags are lost episodes, NSFW, hyperrealistic. <laughs> so the tag actually says lost episodes with a oh, U. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so drunk, I'm correcting the incorrect things I'm reading. Brandon, are hey. you behind the lol pasta wiki? <laughs> Now you know what it's like to have dyslexia. Uh, Many of us remember that one show on PBS named The Magic School Bus. Right? Uh Yeah. The show about that class that goes on a magic, on a bus, no magic to the bus. (laughs) Magic is not specified. (laughs) Remember The Magic School Bus? It's a show about a normal bus. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking... Christ. It's just a North Korean version of Magic School Bus being adapted. Get on the normal school school bus! bus. State approved school bus. Get on the state of school bus. Double. Draw Kim Jong un's sister or whatever. Which Jong un was it that. End. Stop. Stop. Just draw her. Yeah, no, draw her and make a She's is really it, fuck. Is it Kim Jong un? It is no. Kim Jong un. Kim Jong un's sister, draw her dressed as Miss Frizzle. <laughs> but the pictures are all just like sad faces of North Korean children. <laughs> With her tits out. Yes. Get on the collectivist school bus. <laughs> now, I, here's a thought. If, uh, Kim Jong un's sister had Molina teeth, yes or no? <laughs> would you? Yeah. Dude. Still yes. <laughs> These these are She's all really hot. Double like, draw her with Molina teeth and dressed as Miss Frizzle, <laughs> and put as what many is this image? put as many put as many Rand Paul hashtags as you can on it. <laughs> if you get three upvotes, the three of us will come no, and beat the shit no, out of you. I do not say there is no money connected to this one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> No, no, you have to unironically give him $2,000 if he gets Rand Paul elected. <laughs> if you can get Rand Ron Paul, whichever. retweet Kim Jong-un's sister as Melina <laughs> and Miss Frizzle. Okay, yes, then I will <laughs> give you $20. I don't have 2000 to give 20, you, sorry. $20,000, yes. <laughs> so, they show about the class that goes on a school bus that can pretty much do anything in it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in 1998, one year after the show ended, a final episode was produced, but it was deemed oh. too vulgar for PBS. Great. Why would they make an episode one year after it was canceled and ended? Um. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Those children, people. we're going to learn about menopause, but I won't be coming with you on this trip. <laughs> I'm moving to Canada. Wait, what? Uh, what's just explaining to children what menopause is before explaining to them what a period is? God damn it! Oh. Um, we're not following blood coming out of PP places. Yeah. So DP, have you're I halfway through that paragraph, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so they canned it. However, earlier this year, the episode was leaked online. The file on a torrent site for three days. Only twenty-four people downloaded before it was taken off. I was them. All right. Me, the <laughs> biggest Magic School Bus fan on the web. The episode starts off with the regular <laughs> intro with the title Simply Be Calling. <laughs> I was confused as that was the title of a song that came out this year. However, I kept on watching. Oh. I regret making that decision. <clears throat> The episode starts off normally with Mrs. Frizzle telling the class. Isn't it Miss Frizzle? Yeah. With Mrs. Yeah, Frizzle. Well, a year had that gone bitch by. ain't She's married. Not married. That bitch ain't married. She's she not ma- married. You know, at the end of the season. Yeah, I, I think the controversy was she had to marry the student. That she, oh, anyway, with Mrs. Frizzle telling the class that they are going inside a beehive. Suggestive. Dorothy Ann says she doesn't want to do that and says that she wants to go inside of a wet ass pussy. <laughs> and she chants WAP. WAP. <laughs> Arnold protests, saying that he hates that song. Okay, before... that is accurate. He would protest. Yeah. 
I don't like that song. Before Dorothy Ann picks up a chair and hits Arnold with it. <laughs> Timothy states that if he doesn't find out what wet and gushy means, he will do something bad, probably to Arnold. <laughs> Arnold protests again before Timothy kicks him. Carlos says, So you're telling me that wet-ass pussy doesn't mean a cat that's been let out in the rain? Causing the class <laughs> to laugh and say, Carlos. <laughs> Mrs. Frizzle tells the class no as they have a set curriculum to abide by. The next part shocked me, as it featured Carlos, Dorothy Ann, and Timothy ranting about Frizzle, dropping multiple F-bombs. Frizzle bombs? Frizz bombs? How did they get away with making this? The class, minus Arnold, then begins to chant, We want WAP! <laughs> Miss Frizzle ultimately decides to let the class do what they want, as they get in the bus, and Mrs. Frizzle gets onto the table and spreads her legs. The bus drives very slowly. All the while, the chaotic, haunting screams of the children are heard before it cuts to black for three minutes, and then light, and then black, and then light, and then black, and then light, and then black. This is, uh, it still understands the Magic School Bus, though. It hits all the beats. <laughs> I, 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 I can't be mad at it for that. I was right. She's not coming with them on the field trip. Oh, she's oh, well. coming, though. Oh, she's coming. Daha. <laughs> Because <laughs> female orgasm, right? Why not we shrunk down as the small as usual, Miss Frizzle? <laughs> well. Uh, the next scene shows the class and the bus inside Mrs. Frizzle. <laughs> no, read this, read this straight face. <laughs> Channel your Elias, inner creepypasta narrator and read this without Elias, a hint of irony. I need you to put an NSFW 18 plus warning on this episode. No. The next plus. scene. Let me do my best bullshit narrator. The next scene shows the class and the bus inside Miss Frizzle's vagina. And Ralph and Ralph complains that it's cold and <laughs> stinky. God fucking damn. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fear Fix You podcast, everybody. <laughs> if you have a cold and stinky vagina, leave a comment below. <laughs> Don't body shame people with cold and stinky vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> and Carlos, <clears throat> and Carlos thinks that it is worn in you. <laughs> God damn it! And Carlos, and Carlos thinks that it's worn and used like a catcher's mitt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> However, he says you worn and used in a deep, nearly demonic voice. Uh oh. Dorothy Ann wonders about the macaroni. What? Where the ma where the macaroni in a pot is before Arnold discovers three dead corpses of Miss Frizzle's old students. Bum, bum, bum. You know those characters from the pilot that died. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, what were their names? Were Rudy, <laughs> Giuliani, <Marshmallow>. and <laughs> <laughs> Tapestry Day. <laughs> God damn it. Rudy Giuliani and widespread election fraud. Very popular <laughs> character. Don't know why they didn't pick him up. <laughs> widespread election fraud. <laughs> Rudy. The uh, thing is, they weren't cartoony like other people. They were hyper-realistic. <gasps> Drink. You oh. could see their skin, but I think, <laughs> I think I'm cut off. You could see their skin decomposing, their eyes dangling out of their sockets, and their stomachs cut open with organs hanging out. Uh oh. Either they were incredibly detailed paintings, or real. So there's some sort of intervaginal slasher afoot? Or... <laughs> That's my favorite 80s B movie, Intervaginal Slasher. <laughs> is this Perfect. the first tampon pasta? Uh, this is uh, this is the next puppet combo game. Oh, Mrs. Frizzle looks down at the class, looking at the decomposing bodies, and laughs, causing the class to look in fear. She tells the students that they have been that they have stuck. Nope. To, they should have stuck to her curriculum, and she starts. Now they're to stuck to her, a speculum. Oh, go ahead. What? And starts to close her <laughs> pussy opening, and Ralph screams in fear. Mrs. Frizzle, with a crazy voice, said that they broke her rules and they will be trapped in her pussy forever. And she God laughs it. maniacally. Boy, class, haven't we all been there? <laughs> I could only wish. The class screams in fear. 
as the opening completely shuts, and all you could hear was the class whimpering, crying, and asking, Why did you do this? Why? We then cut to Mrs. Frizzle as she gets up and walks to the camera and says a poem. (laughs) (laughs) I said certified freak, seven days a week, wet and gushy. What she said next, with a demonic voice and red, bleeding, hyper-realistic, mind you, eyes, will haunt me for as long as I live. Make my field trips neat, students. That's my Miss Frizzle impression. Excellent. She laughs again, and the scene fades out. It stays on that screen for 30 seconds, timestamp, before the credits roll. No music, no background, nothing, just the text, and that's it. So, here's the problem with this, though. Even as a troll pasta... I, I understand the troll pasta aspect of it, but even so, there's that thing of, well, this could just literally be a movie that somebody makes and puts on the internet themselves. You know, like this an is animation. less a troll pasta and more a crappy pasta. It's 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 a deviant art fetish, is what it is yeah. <laughs> that somebody uh, got paid to is make it? on fucking uh, Patreon. There's no yeah. trolling here because pretty much from the outset, it's ridiculous. So we're not being trolled. Well, in my well, opinion, it says lol pasta. I yeah. I don't know that like. I don't know what the fuck this Reddit is, or Reddit is, whatever How this is wiki is. is. <laughs> Who put this Listen, Facebook in my Twitter? As a very important Reddit mod, I must say that I don't care for this. <laughs> Needless to say, I was horrified by what I saw. Why? I tried to contact, contact both Nelvana and, S- <laughs> and South Carolina Educational Television the station that produced the show about this episode. But they never got back to me. Oh. They must be in on it. Recently, YouTuber Meat Canyon made a recreation oh. of the episode entitled Field Trip, a Magic School Bus Cartoon. It is spot on an exact recreation of okay. the episode. So somebody yeah. so this literally is just something somebody <laughs> Yeah, no, you, like, you 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 interrupted Meat Canyon did yeah. this. Which... You you interrupted the joke. It is a spot on exact recreation of the episode. But with some differences. <laughs> you can't tell me that that's not funny. Yeah. it's it, This is uh, legally distinct. <laughs> legally distinct wet ass pussy. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but when you said when you said legally distinct, the first thing that came into my mind was legally distinct girlfriend. Like as a like overly attached girlfriend. It's my legally this, distinct girlfriend. This is my vagina. There are many like it, but this one is legally distinct. <laughs> <laughs> legally stinks. <laughs> but with some differences. The most notable being that it's all in his style. Yeah. But when I watched it myself, Miss Frizzle just stared at me with those hyper realistic eyes and said, Life will be over before you know it. Pray to me, or I will make your death happen quicker. Slow and painful. It'll happen quicker, but slow and painful. Yeah. <laughs> Sooner. I don't know but what slower. I should do anymore. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that thing. <laughs> Do we hey, know who wrote you know this? What? It was entertaining. That that's it. That's good. That's good I, enough for me. The first person to add this was J B Wikia Rises, but I don't know if it's you know it could be copied from the Troll Pasta Wiki, so I don't know. You know yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <sighs> So how do you what do you how do you even comment on that? Was we it a don't. good troll pasta? Was it a good troll pasta? No, it was a good crappy pasta. It was not a good troll pasta, which I maintain. Um, sounds like a distinction without a difference. I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, me too. I have no opinion of it. So next story. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's it. it it has some moments in it where you know it's being written tongue in cheek, like where you said it was spot on exactly like it, but with some differences. But other than that, I think it's indistinguishable from an authentic attempt at a lost episode, which is like, I might just be missing some things that are in it that are, you know, jokes. Maybe if you see the video, there's some reason, you know, that you would, it would shed light, but yeah. I, I, like, I have to judge it outside of the video that it's, um, paraphrasing because you are, tr- you know, you are taking the time to make this. So I'm going to judge it outside of that to be the most fair. And it's entertaining, but it, yeah, it's not, nor is it intended to be anything special. Like Brandon said, I appreciate it for what it is, which is not much, which is fine. If it, if it is relating exactly what's in someone else's video, though, what do we think about that? Like if it's just jotting down what somebody else came up with in their video. Um, 
That would, I would be lame, yeah. but well, I don't think I doubt it is. Okay. Within the context of what Meat Canyon is, um, Listen, Meat Canyon as... itself <laughs> is a overproduced, not sorry, overproduced, a highly produced, <laughs> it's overproduced, very, very intricate shit post. I so see. the fact that people are making shit posts based off the shit post, I can respect that. Okay. You know, it's one thing if someone <laughs> does a siren head fanfic. And just apes off of uh, Trevor without, you know, giving adequate credit. It's different when someone says, "Yeah, I just put me Canyon's uh, visuals to, you know, to a, a troll boss to find whatever, but whatever." Okay. So Bisbee Guys, says he would be a fan of Siren Head if he was an ape. Okay, go ahead, Deepay. Uh, I was, uh, I just like clicked on the video. It's literally just they get trapped in her vagina. Oh, yeah. Oh well. No, like me Canyon's good, but it's you know. It doesn't need to be transcribed to a crappy pasta, but the fact that someone did it, whatever. I'm not, you know, I don't have a problem with that. So I now do don't wanna... like this, huh? I now don't like this. Ah, uh, we yeah, want more. Yeah. So do we, do we want to just move on, get a, a fresh look at a different story? A baby, baby Epstein book. Uh, I'm sorry, baby Einstein bootleg version. Yeah. Guys, I was I thought that that said Epstein. I'm sorry, that's not as entertaining. <laughs> baby Epstein. I we can still it, do I The Simpsons, Homer's Rage. God damn it. How about we save that for last? Okay. Yeah, if we get around to that. Fucking Baby Epstein bootleg version. Written by Garfield Fan 1997. <laughs> AKA Ashley Armbruster. Bruster. Armbruster. <laughs> I love I love the name Garfield Fan 1997. It's like so fucking tragically bad, but yet awesome. <laughs> the fact that you would have to it, it's it works on so many levels. The fact that you would have to <laughs> announce really that you're a fan of Garfield, the fact you would be a fan of Garfield, the fact you'd be proud of it, and the fact that you haven't updated your username since 1997 and likely aren't still a fan of Garfield. <laughs> Oh, no, you got the name wrong. The name is Garfield Fan 1997, aka Ashley Armbruster. <laughs> yeah, that's the full. That's the full name. I see. It's like when people put like the XXX no scope 482 XXX. It's like you got to include <laughs> aka Ashley Armbruster. Uh oh, yes, our childhood. The best thing we can think of since TV and movies came along. What? You wouldn't. You want to know what I grew up with? Baby Einstein. Now, I know you're going to ask, what the fuck are you still watching that crap for when it's for babies and toddlers? We, we didn't well, think you were still watching it. Well, excuse, well, excuse me, princess. That's none of your business. <laughs> and excuse me right there. I said princess because I was imitating Link from Legend of Zelda oh, TV show. Off. Come on. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Ashley, are you okay? This is some next level bullshit, man. <laughs> Ashley, are you okay? Are you okay, Ashley? <laughs> I said, imitating the You've famous been... Michael Jackson song, but <laughs> swapping Annie for Ashley. You've been hit by, you've been struck by a Baby Garfield fan. Time. A Garfield fan. Baby Einstein. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. This is me. My name is Sid Chang. That's a made-up fucking name. <laughs> oh. I'm from the television show The Casa Grande. Sid, Sid Chang is some J.K. Rowling level of name invention. <laughs> Sid Chang on The, Cross, the Casa Grandes? Yes. Uh, no. My occupation is hanging out with my friend Ronnie Ann. My occupation is to hang out. She's yeah. sadly gone now, so I'm unemployed, so I can't tell you about her, sadly. But anyways, <laughs> why do I still watch Baby Einstein? Well, here's a few reasons why. All right. So this is where it picks up and becomes serious. All right. I'll explain them from A to C. A. It's very colorful. B. The music is amazing. And C. You're never too old for anything, in my opinion. <laughs> the best part of Baby Einstein is the first episode of the series entitled Language Nursery. It teaches you how to speak different languages and much more. M wait, it's more about more than language. <laughs> language it teaches you how to speak different languages and how to make bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Ein Bomb in the Zeppelin. <laughs> what? 
That's a, that's a very uh, what do you got there? A smoothie joke. Yeah. Uh, however, there's somewhat of a bootleg version of this episode. Here's the story. One day, on my uncle Dante's house, just playing. Dante Jag. <laughs> Sorry. Then Dante claimed. <laughs> I wanted to fill your 3DS with light. <laughs> God damn it. I should have been the one to fill. Yeah. Then Dante claimed that we should do some fun stuff like going to McDonald's, Goodwill, and more. <laughs> Fucking hell. I, lo- I love that these troll pastas are filled with so much Americana of just like. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, the- this has more setup for finding something abandoned at a fucking goodwill than any other goddamn authentic attempt at a story like this. Yeah. My uncle suggested we do some things, you know, like go to McDonald's and goodwill. Anyway, later on we're going to go to goodwill and find something. It really is the fucking Walmart people experience distilled into <laughs> a fucking diary entry. <laughs> a wa- Walmart person writes a story. <laughs> the Walmart Seriously. diarrhea experience. Who's it? Whose turn is it? Uh, it's mine. Oh, I just right. I just want to put this out there. Shitting on the floor at Walmart is okay because it's a Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. We arrived at McDonald's. I ordered a cheeseburger with no pickles and no onions, a cinnamon roll, French fries, and a Hawaiian punch. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, the employee who was Sergeant Hartman. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that a character from something, or...? I it's, don't know. It's from Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Refused to offer me the cinnamon roll, since he claimed that they don't do all-day breakfast anymore. We do not do all-day breakfast anymore! Uh, Dante then pulled out a pistol and said, Listen here, you boot camper. We don't care that it's the afternoon. Either you serve us the cinnamon rolls or we're reporting both your boss and the manager. Why not him? Wait, we're reporting both your... Not... Okay. (laughs) Hartman kept refusing, so Dante just walked in and beat up the employee. And and we managed to get free food ourselves. Nice. Mm, So Some bath, some beat-ass pussy. (laughs) God damn it. Me and Dante drove away like it never happened. <laughs> They're so fucking badass. <laughs> that, that's some um, fear and loathing in Las Vegas shit. Yes. Just like, fuck off, whatever. <laughs> then we went to Goodwill, which was not that far away. Wow, was a Goodwill the- near McDonald's. What, a, what are the odds? <laughs> Go figure. I'm at the Goodwill. I'm at the McDonald's. I'm at the combination Goodwill and McDonald's. <laughs> I want to play in the ball pit. No, those are, I don't know, what would that be? Used used socks. Balls of socks. I'm going know. down to McDonald's. Man, that would be got so $20 embarrassing. $20 in my pocket. <laughs> then going to the Goodwill. Still got $20 in my pocket. I'm going to the used sock store. Got twenty dollars in my pocket. I'm gonna buy a uh, new jacket with twenty dollars in the pocket. Uh, I'm coming. Gonna smell your old socks. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the VHX section checking for some kid movies. Looking for some kid movies. <sighs> <laughs> Shut up, guys. Shut up. I was in the VHS section looking at all the kids' movies they sold, such as Thomas and the Magic Railroad, The Road to El Dorado, and others. You know, the classics. Yeah. Man, Chelsea and I are big Chel Dorado fans. There you go. Yeah. While deciding the movies I got, I planned to get, I met up with a familiar person named Franklin Bean. Frank he once he once owned an alcoholic cider factory before Mr. Fox bankrupted it. What the fuck is even? Okay, I don't know. The cider died. was not alcoholic in nature; just the system running it was alcoholic. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have uh, scrolled down yet to like look at the images. No, because I'm saving myself for marriage. Don't, don't go ahead and <sighs> scroll down. Oh my god! Uh, my home. Shit. It's just it's just shit post images. It is. Wow. My uncle Dante is just Dante in name only from from DMC Devil May Cry. Dino, Dino as they say. Yeah. Dino. Uh 
So my question is this. You said alcoholic cider factory. Do you get, like, the cider and you're disappointed that you're not getting drunk, so you call up and they say, alcoholic cider factory, what do you want? There's a lot of levels. Oh, now I get it. I get it. A second? There's a lot of levels to it. Yeah. Uh, That's when he landed me a DVD, (laughs) which had... Damn it, no! What? He didn't frisbee a DVD to you. Handed, wow. Handed me a DVD, which had that star from Baby Einstein. Not a movie star, a real star, like you see on the cover of Language Nursery. However, the star had the beak of Colonel Dodo. End quote. <laughs> End quote. That never started. Are you ruining my childhood all of a sudden? I asked Mr. Bean. He told me that I will like this bootleg VHS because it's filled with crossover characters. Oh, God. Does it have Dante from the Devil May Cry series? Maybe. So anyway... Franklin's homie, who was no other than Wes Anderson, showed up and told me that someone makes a very special surprise at the end. It's Wes Anderson. I tried to keep my loud excitement from bursting out because I was going to relive my childhood. What? Yeah. I met up with Dante again in the clothing section and told him what I found. But Dante got confused and said, why does the star have a beat? I replied by saying, maybe it's an updated version of the video. So this whole family is just really into Baby Einstein, and they know they know the, the approved that's covers. Not, listen, that's not consistent with Baby Einstein canon. Yeah. We then went to the checkout, and I met these familiar people who go by the names of Vincent <laughs> Vega and his homie, Jules Winfield. Uh, they told us that they were once hitmen. But they ended their jobs ever since a riot broke out in their hometown. We bought our stuff, and Dante drove me home since I had a fun, fulfilling day. Uh. Okay. Does he look like a star? (laughs) I arrived at the house, and all my family was there. Uh, If you are curious about my family, their names are Gary Supernova, Richard (laughs) Thatcherd, Kiki, Mr. Hector, Kit Sacord, Ratchet, Peter Jacob, Jacobs, and two sisters who are ducks. Quite a big family, isn't it? Oh, I also have a pet squirrel in which her name is Andy. <laughs> in which. I, ma- I made my way to my bedroom and sat down on my bed. Andy inserted the tape and I was <laughs> and I was in for a good time. But we didn't have However- a VCR. <laughs> <laughs> However, I got pissed by something when the tape started. Julie Eigner Clark happened to be Cynthia from Silent Hill 4. Oh, of God course. Damn it. She detailed what you needed to know about Baby Einstein and how you can have your baby interact with it. I was so angry Cynthia from Silent Hill 4 was here. <laughs> oh, fuck. Everybody no. get, get angry. Cynthia from Silent Hill 4 is here now. <laughs> then they went to the episode. Things were quite normal with the bear popping out of its little box, the fishbowl and the shapes. But after that, when it showed the cow, the beavers from the open season films came out oh, and God. started <laughs> harassing the uttered animal. Open season, I recognize that as a terrible CGI movie I never saw. The cow somehow went <laughs> Super Saiyan and lasered the beavers. <laughs> Oh, then it kept walking. I'm the laser in the beaver. (laughs) Fucking hell. Then it kept walking. Next, we're introduced to the ring stacker, but it looks like Superintendent Chalmers was narrating while James Sand put the rings together. Who the fuck is James (laughs) Sand? Who gives a fuck? Adam Sandler's brother. Adam. Are you are you telling me you don't know about the renowned James Sands? No. <laughs> Look this up. <laughs> <sighs> if, American uh, professional soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking course. Of course it is. How could we be so blind? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> what came along after that was the train. But it seems like Nathan Drake was driving the train. <laughs> The lava toy was normal. But when it showed us the barnyard race, the animals were the bear family from The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm concerned because this author actually has been watching Baby Einstein videos, if they know. (laughs) Assuming this isn't all made up, (laughs) they do know the way that it 
flows and the scenes and everything. Oh no, oh no, the baby Einstein fandom is dying. Retweet this if you're a real Einsteiner. <laughs> Damn it. Einsteiner. Uh, after that, the flowers and the mobile toy came on screen, and they were all normal as well as the bear in the box. Bricks and candles, however. But, however, the scenes with the dolls were images of Alexander the donkey, Mr. Weenie, Buzz the honey, Nut Cheerio Bee, and Rap Rat. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <sighs> then the train came back, but Stephen Fry was driving instead of Nathan Drake. The oh. centipede appeared as normal, but Pappy from Kronk's New Groove <laughs> was narrating the entire thing. Pappy then narrated the next lava toy, the carousel and the chain colored black, white, and red. What are these choices? <laughs> what, are, what is this imagery? <laughs> what are the choices of characters? Like this... <sighs> Hey, 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 set up, pay off, crossover characters. Che- Chekhov's Poppy from Kronk's New Groove, is that what we're experiencing here? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. I decided to remove the tape, as I didn't want to watch the rest, since there might be more crossovers that I didn't <laughs> feel like watching. <laughs> I stopped the tape because I got bored. <laughs> It's the best. Uh, I kept it in my closet, so I donated it back to Goodwill. After that, I decided to have a nice shower, but since I haven't had one since this morning... Uh, okay. I must have been in there for like five minutes since I was in there when I noticed that Norman Bates was going to stab my ass to death. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, Franklin Bean came to my oh rescue. Oh my god, guys. What? This is a legitimately... Hidden within this pasta is a legitimately excellent concept for a fucking creepy pasta. Okay. In the vein of too many cooks on Adult Swim, just a story uh-huh. where there are constant crossovers of celebrities in your everyday fucking life. Yeah. Okay. Like you're trying to work. You're, you're at. You're a barista at Starbucks, and Phoebe from Friends comes in, and you're like, "Oh fucking no, not this again." <laughs> the you know the. Cheeto Cat, the fucking panther, whatever the fuck he is, sitting Chester next to you Cheeto. on the bus and you're trying not to look. You know? Chester Cheeto. Chester Come Cheeto, on. yeah. Uh, yes, well, my final thoughts on the tape were, as I kept showering, I told him that I wasn't used to the crossover in the episode. I not A knock was at the bathroom door. I paused my shower to go answer it. <laughs> I, it I, appeared... know that that's a, I know that's a legitimate sentence, but I like the idea of pausing the shower. Like it... <laughs> the water just stops halfway. <laughs> <Yeah. that> Beep! <laughs> it appeared to be Alberto Clemente asking if Norman was here. I pointed to where he was, and Norman was put under arrest by the police. <laughs> The next day, I went out for a nice clear walk. Along the way, I met some familiar people, such as 13 Amp, Murray Wiggle, Chris, <laughs> Chris. Eggplant <laughs> Edwardson, <laughs> and Chris Hopper Gregory, Mayor Madoon, and Eddie Scarpa. Uh-huh. While walking back to my house, I got stopped by Vex and Matt Damon asking if there's a thrift shop <laughs> nearby. I, Fucking Vex! I told him. <laughs> I told him that there's a thrift shop all the way in Japan. (sighs) Is that a fucking Clerks reference? Well, all I know is that these characters were showing up before they saw the video, so... (laughs) Remember, if you see a bootleg version of Baby Einstein VHS, you are probably not going to like it. (laughs) It's been nice chatting with you, but I'm going to the theaters to see a movie about Hitchcock. Wow. Wow. There's all these photos of all these characters. It's no amazing. comments. I have so many comments. Listen. Oh, never mind. There they are. The very oh, bottom. Chris is apparently a character from uh, Team America fucking police of the fucking thing. Sure. Puppet show. Oh, yeah. South Park. Mm. Word salad. <laughs> Murray Wiggle from the Wiggles. Wow. Okay. Just Murray, though. <sighs> what? What? The- we we still got a little bit of time, so let's do The Simpsons, Homer's Rage. All right, uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. I found it. Good luck, Bye. DJ. What is a... Oh, what shit. is this game eight? I don't see what's... The Simpsons. No, what's no. IA this game? What? I have to zoom in. What? What's I, uh, this game eight? <laughs> Jesus. Where is it? Uh, in the chat. Again. You gotta I'll scroll up a bit and find it while drunk. I think I've just been recommended different things. Oh, or not. 
Okay, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. I got this. I'm tired. <laughs> Everybody out there, here's a challenge for you. Write a, uh, creepypasta where there's a crossover of a fictional character into your life. But don't make it like fan fiction y where it's like, you know, I dated Clarissa from Clarissa Explains It All. Make it like some weird shit, man. Make it some disturbing shit. I, uh, I arrested Clarissa under citizen's arrest from Clarissa Explains It All and took her to a jail, but it was a male jail, and so that was a mistake. I'm a sorry. Jail. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's from people with the USPS. Okay, the DP, world. when you sober up, transcribe that into a no story title, that entire thing. <laughs> and it was, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, tell me. Tell me. Actually, tell me. Look me in the eyes and tell me that male jail isn't a great name for a gay bar. (laughs) Oh, fuck. (laughs) Uh. Uh, The Simpsons, Homer's Rage. So you all know about The Simpsons, right? I'm a big fan of it, so I watch almost every episode of it. Well, except for season 12. Even after that time, all that time I watched, I just never watched it. Can't remember why, though. So last week I decided to check out Kiss Cartoon for it. But for some reason it wasn't there, so I found an alternative called Kim Cartoon, and luckily it was there. So I watched 1 to 15 episodes over the course of 15 days when i got the episode to 16 the quality was poor not terrible probably 30 60p and i just accepted that that's where it was fine okay the episode guys started normally I just wanna... except the fact that the chalkboard <laughs> gag wasn't there so when i got to the couch gag the original one Fuck. was just there to sit down normally Wait. Wait, the episode everybody picture DP explaining office. this in a police interrogation room. Okay, go ahead. He was eating a donut in one hand and was changing channels with his portable TV in the other. Homer accidentally dropped his donut and it hit a button, causing the red light to flash and an alarm to sound. Homer began to panic as he knew that if he didn't fix this, Springfield was doomed. The countdown three, Homer started looking at the button. Shown in the All Maggie Makes 3, 2, Homer begins to cry but m- manages to find button one. Homer begins to attempt to press button. Right as he was about to press button, confetti fell down, music playing, began cameraman as the TV show host looked. Person came, revealing that all this was a prank. Homer lunges at the host in an anger punch. (laughs) (laughs) Anger punch, the famous Korean pop band. I was was watching it. He was clearly terrified. A few security people came and grabbed him. The <sighs> man looked pained and bloodied, but, however, he got up and started walking towards Homer, attempting to attack him. Homer broke out of his arms <laughs> and beat him. The scene suddenly cut to a court scene. The judge says, Homer J. Simpson, due to the specific reasoning of the crime, I have decided to pun- pinch you by making a ten thousand pound one bail of the victim's widow by 2002 court adjourned hey i know this is probably bad but i just wanted to practice my writing skills to try and solve some mercy haha <laughs> yes, yes, try and solve some mercy as a mod of the creepy post subreddit i have to decide if i rate this a troll pasta or not i don't honestly know if I look at this person's post history and anything else they've posted makes sense, then this is a troll pasta. Oh, Let's see. never mind. There's like four posts and it's not enough. Oh fuck me. Okay. Said Homer. Where the ass pasta? Oh, that was beautiful. Can we clip that reading right there and just upload that to the creepy pasta YouTube channel? Just put <laughs> some music under that. Because I think I, I fucking nailed it. I don't know if that would hurt or help our analytics. God damn it. I really don't. I'd love to see the transcription of that <laughs> that YouTube comes up with. Uh, I think it's good at One the end of the episode. <laughs> this has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts are Abysme, Dead Palette, and Slime Beast. Music by Abysme. Art by C.F. Comer. Voice over by Atticus Jackson. Edited by Elias the Intern. Subscribe to Fear Fic on YouTube to stay up to date on new episodes. In any city, in any state, 
in any country anywhere in the world walk into an abandoned blockbuster video or Toys R Us store. Once inside, look for a homeless drifter who appears to have taken residence in the dilapidated building. You may have to search behind the empty shelves or even in the break room. Approach the drifter and, in a shrill, nasally scream, ask, Where's the beef? The drifter's eyes will widen, his lips will smack, and his nostrils will dilate. If you have come at the correct point in time, a small insect will drop from his facial hair. The facial hair can be a full beard, mustache, a goatee, or even mutton chops. The drifter will lead you to the stock room, and he will unlock the doors by humming the theme to Punky Brewster. Once you are beyond the stockroom doors, run full tilt as fast as you can and do not look back. This room does not expand into a long hallway or anything like that, so you will run straight into a cement wall rather quickly. Don't rub your head and exclaim, Ouchie mama! No matter how much you may need to, stay completely silent until you hear the sound of synth music gradually rising around you. Open your eyes, fuck. I told you to close your eyes earlier. And you will see the haver of 1980s aesthetics standing before you. He will be in a members-only jacket, stonewashed blue jeans, and a pair of Air Jordans. His t-shirt will bear the phrase, Frankie says relax. But you must not read it, or dire consequences will befall you at some point in the future. You must now offer him a can of tab and say... Raphael's cool, but rude. Upon hearing this phrase, the haver of 1980s aesthetics will remove his aviator sunglasses, pull aside the headphones of his Walkman, and look directly into your idiot face. If he says, Bogus, you must immediately turn and run out of the room without ever looking over your shoulder again for the rest of your days. If you ever, at any point, accidentally look over your shoulder, you will instantly shit your pants, and Stacy will point and laugh at you. If he says, Radical, and plays a tasty riff on a sick guitar, you will have succeeded in your quest. Everything around you will turn to static, with the vertical hold way out of whack. You will blink twice then find yourself in an open, neon green field. The sky will be purple, and the sun will have horizontal lines through it. At your feet, you will find a Rubik's Cube that cannot be solved. Don't even try. Not saying that because something bad will happen if you try, just trying to save you some time. This Rubik's Cube is item 1980 of 1800 of 18,000. Wakazashi's are cool. They're yeah, literally they're just... called they're they're called walkie talkies. What the fuck are you? <laughs> You've been on Japanese Twitter for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's you know to be fair. Um, but no, Wakazashi's are cool. They're just they're katanas, but they're smaller. Hmm. But they're not so small that people are going to be like, "Come on, that's not even manly." Why don't we rebrand them for uh, an American audience? We'll call them uh, Katainis. Katainis, I like yeah. that. Tactical Ooh, Katainis. That could be like a, you know, for for like a children's TV show that doesn't have like blood and violence, but they're samurai. <laughs> the and we could just call them Kata- Katainis. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most weeb thing you can say, because uh, it's pretty weeb to be like, katanas are cool, but then to discover the smaller cousin of the katana and say, yo, but actually... Hmm. <laughs> Sapuku baby still make your dreams come true. Well, h- how many times have um y- y- you know you seen a assassination attempt taking place with a katana in modern times? Twice, seven, none. Yeah, only only one assassination caught on uh, caught on film with the wakazashi. You don't see that with a katana. Well, that's because the other ones are not caught on film because the assassin slices the camera in half in midair. True. Takes takes two seconds for it to slide apart at a diagonal angle, you know. Like because enemies. they weren't caught on camera doesn't mean that they weren't happening and yep. also awesome. Yep. And epic. Yep. Oh no, my assassination is epic. <sighs> Reports are coming in that Big Bird was seen at the Capitol riots bearing a wakazashi. <laughs> 
Uh, double. Double. <laughs> <laughs> weeaboo, I, I... weeaboo MAGA supporter, Big Bird. Big Bird. <laughs> Wearing Snuffleupagus' head like the buffalo thing. And, and then a follow-up of Big Bird in jail after the Capitol riots, asking for bird seed and being given an alternate diet. Mm. <laughs> Big Bird just like... Big Bird at the at the uh, airport just getting mad that he's on the no-fly list. What? <laughs> I can't fly? I could do it myself. It's like, sir, we can't allow you to exit this building. <laughs> so you're caging me. I'm a cage bird now. I can fly. I can do it on my own. They pull out a rocket launcher. Uh, don't. I, I I would not suggest it. So so his name has to be Q-Bird then, right? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so stupid. Hooper uh, 1. Oh, oh, okay. I just, wow. Wow, yeah. Okay, I got that. What? What? Mr. Hooper. Okay. He said Hooper one, and I was like, what the fuck is Hooper? Oh, right. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I got the plug. Mm-hmm. Bernie Sanders would make a good Oscar the Grouch, but go ahead. I'm once again asking you to stay away from my trash can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.